Hey guys! Okay, welcome to another episode of Morning Tea. My name is Wahama and today's tea is green tea. I, you know what, I'm not even going to say what today's tea is ever again unless it's something different. <clears throat> so one of the things that's happening right now is Loretta Lynch, who is the presidential nomination or nominee for attorney general, it hasn't, ha like, it hasn't happened yet. Okay, so Eric Holder, who is our current attorney general, and if you don't know what, the, what an attorney general is, it is the highest office of being a lawyer in the land. He's like a lawyer, he's like the top lawyer for the United States of America. You know what I'm saying? He holds the position. He's part of the president's cabinet. It's the only title in the, in the president's cabinet that doesn't have a named secretary. So like, you know, secretary of state, secretary of defense, secretary, you know, we have all the secretaries that are part of the president's cabinet. The attorney general is part of the cabinet as well. Now, uh, Eric Holder put in his resignation November 8th and um, it was up to Obama to then nominate someone else to be attorney general. And the president, along with a Senate vote, but the president kind of controls who they want to be uh, their attorney general because they get to choose their cabinet, right? But the Senate gets to vote to make sure that they're not, that everyone agrees on who that person should be because, you know, it's, a, it's an important um is an important office to hold. So Eric Holder is the first African American to hold the position. Now, the next nominee that Obama is nominating is uh, Loretta Lynch. And the Senate still has yet to vote her in to office. So it's like Eric Holder put in his resignation and now he's just sitting in this office like, uh, can I go now? Like, <laughs> I, I want to leave. The Senate is saying that they have other things to take care of, which is like crazy because like when you need to vote in a new attorney general, you just do it. There are some Senate members who are saying that they need to like look into her and like make sure she's right for the position and like, you know, cross their T's and dot their I's and whatnot. And it's just like, what? You, what? <laughs> but really what's happening, or at least what liberals think is happening, is that there is a bill, an anti- uh, trafficking, human trafficking bill that the Senate is squabbling over right now. And it's supposed to be one of the first bipartisan sort of bills to be passed, like that both sides of the aisle are like, yes, this is a good bill. But apparently there's an anti-abortion clause or law that's thrown in with that bill that the Democrats are like, no, um, we mean anti-abortion. So I'm not exactly sure I need to do more research to see exactly what the clause or that law in that bill pertains to. Um, but again, it's pertaining to women not having control over their body. So my first reaction is to be like, come on, Republicans. Like, why do you want to control women's bodies? Like, why do you feel like it's your business to be able to control women's bodies? Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. How can you tell someone that they... They have to have a baby if they don't want it. It doesn't make any sense to me. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about. That's one thing. So let me know. You, I know, I know this is such a touchy, touchy subject, and I should not put this out there for people to even comment on. So I won't. But if you want to comment, I would like to hear your side of it. But like, really, I want you to specifically tell me why you think it's your job to tell a woman what to do with her body. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's really what it breaks down to to me. Like. Talk to me about why you think it's your job as another human to be able to tell another human what they should do with their body, especially if you are not going to take care of that child. You are not going to be able to share that burden of even carrying a child, whatever that is to them. You're not going to be able to solve their problem. So I mean, I'm all about anti-human trafficking. You guys have no idea. Like whenever I like... I don't know. Do you guys think about it? Cause I think about it. Like I think about human trafficking and like girls getting stolen and sold into slavery, sex slaves all the time. Cause I've seen numerous document <laughs> documentaries about it. And it's something that I think about. It's something that I, it's something I worry about when I leave the country. I mean, it even happens in the States. It doesn't even have to happen outside of the States. Like it happens here where young girls are internet talking to someone on the internet and they go meet somebody in Vegas and all of a sudden they're somebody's hoe. Like, crazy stuff you know i'm against human trafficking but like i want to know what that anti-abortion bill has to do with anything like are they saying like if you're pregnant i don't know i don't know what it's saying but i i can't imagine that it's anything that's helpful to the women who are in that situation so anyways so they're saying that they're dealing with that the senate is saying that mitch mcconnell who is the uh, majority leader of the senate republican um because you know the republican 
Republicans own the Senate and the House because we didn't vote. We didn't vote. Um, we didn't vote to make sure that all of our Democratic people were in the, the House and the Senate so that the president would not have to fight with the House and the Senate constantly because now the House and the Senate is Republican majority owned, basically. Anywho, so they're saying that they can't make the decision because they're too busy fighting about this other bill and that they they hope that by early next week they'll have an answer. But it's been four months and this is the longest it's ever taken a Senate to vote in a new attorney general. And the great thing about Loretta Lynch is that not only is she African-American, but she's a she. So she's going to be the first woman to ever hold the position. And she probably won't hold it very long because as we all know, there are um, elections 2016. So she'll have it for this year. And we don't know what's going to happen when the new president comes in. But I mean, come on, this is time to make history. The Senate is re being ridiculous, you know? But that's just my opinion. Another thing that's happening in the White House, the White House is becoming... It's, it's coming mighty colored. There's another black woman, uh, Deisha Dreyer, who's named the new White House social secretary. And she was a, she's 37, but she started off as an intern at 31 in the White House. And she just got like social secretary. Like good for her girl. Good for you girl. Deisha A. Um, so another thing that's happening in the news is there's another police um, like beating of a person, of a civilian so I don't know if you guys heard about this. This is very local to California, like San Bernardino area. So this guy stole a horse and led the police on a two hour chase on a horse. I'm not sure of the details. I don't know how it lasted two hours, but all I know is that he led them on the chase for two hours to the point where like news helicopters were like circling and like following it like it was a car chase and if you guys don't live here you know that car chases in in california are a big deal we all are watching them because some fool is speeding around and everyone like you're not gonna get away when you do a car chase because the news helicopters police helicopters like everyone is surrounding you and just watching you drive around the city like a maniac so basically that's kind of what happened in San Bernardino and it's San Bernardino is kind of flat and dusty and like dry. So like he was like riding around on a horse and it lasted two hours. And by the time the cops caught up to him, like they tased him. So he was down because he got tased from a distance. Like they set up the thing, they tased him. And then like five cops beat the shit out of him. I mean, like it was all caught on channel four helicopter like video. I'm like, they beat the crap out of him. Like four of them attacked him, beat him up. And then like two others came and like, beat. it was like crazy. It's like, they were all trying to get in and get a piece of beating this guy up. And I'm like, why though? Be like, I'm like, why are they beating him up? And my dad is like, look, look, look. Oh, oh, like he's like, oh God. And this one's coming in. Like, ah. And I was just like, what is happening? Like, why are they beating him up? And my dad's like, well, they, he led him on a two hour race or whatever right and i'm like but like he, did he shoot at them like does he have a gun no no nothing they i guess this the adrenaline of chasing him for the last two hours this made him want to go like beat the crap out of him because they were like you I don't, I don't know i have no idea i mean maybe it's the adrenaline i'm not i don't even know at all but they beat him up like i first thought he was black and then i was like oh no he must be mexican like maybe he's mexican and then like it turns out the dude is white so you know in the a couple of videos goes my a couple of videos ago in the walter scott kendrick lamar video i asked for there to be evidence of white cops or cops beating up someone who's not black and that's evidence of it so it's like you know i mean it's not like it's as many as i've seen as black people but like it's still evidence that like these cops like seriously though like i mean the way they beat him up like they didn't like rough him up and like one person like got a kick they were like i mean it was like i don't even know how the dude's like i'm sure he had like broken ribs like i'm sure like he they beat him up like they were like they were a gang you know like they found some fool in their territory and they were about to mess him up because he was in their hood like that's how they beat him up it was crazy it was crazy so this police brutality is a is crazy is like I keep saying crazy because it's so unbelievable. And now we're, we're finally getting footage of it. It's, it's ridiculous. I actually went back and watched the Rodney King beating because I didn't really understand when it happened. Like I saw them beating him, but I didn't get it. And I think as a, in my kid brain, I thought like he must have done something because like, you know, police are good. But I look back and they, 
Rodney King was just like driving drunk or something. And like, yes, that is terrible. But like, they beat him up real bad. Like, really bad, son. And I was like, dang. You know, like, I don't know. I get it's hard out there for cops. Like, I get that. But like, you need to quit. I think maybe people shouldn't be allowed to be on the force after a certain amount of time. Like, maybe you can only serve 10 years and then you got to go. Like, you know. Like, you can't lose your humanity like that. You can't allow seeing the worst of society make you lose your humanity like that. You can't do that. That's bad for the soul. You know, it's bad. It's bad for the spirit. Maybe like seven years and then you got to go. I have no idea how to remedy that. But they need to not get to the point where they're just beating up people because they can. Yeah. There's in another story, um, there was a, a, a guy, a black guy who was selling guns i think i think it was either guns or I th i'm sure it was guns i don't know what else but he was selling stolen guns to an undercover cop they had it all on camera and then uh he realized that it was a setup when the when the cop surrounded him so he jumps out of the car and he runs and someone shoots him and the dude says like oh my god i shot him i'm sorry the dude says that he meant to pull out his taser and tase him and um, not shoot him, but he ended up killing him. Like after the guy gets to the ground, he's like, you shot me, you shot me. Oh God, you shot me. I can't, why'd you shoot me? I can't believe you shot me. And then, um, and then the, uh, then he's, then the police get on him and put their knee against his neck and head, you know, because that's what you do when you're a police officer. I think that's like part of protocol is to knee somebody in the neck so they stay down. And um, then dude's like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And the police officer's like, I don't care if you can breathe or not, like something like that. And then the guy died shortly after. And the person who shot him wasn't even a cop. The person who shot him was like, um, was um, like a volunteer, like a like you know, like volunteer environment or whatever. It was like a volunteer police chief or deputy or something, <laughs> police deputy. Um, and apparently, what happened is that the guy who shot him, I don't know his name, you. I'll have to look it up. He paid like a lot of money. He's given a lot of money. He's a very rich man. And he's given a lot of money to the police department and to the city. And so that was part of his like, thanks for giving us money. We'll take you on a ride along. You'll be able to like be deputy deputized for like an hour or whatever. And then he ends up killing somebody. I mean, I, I have a question. Don't we think it's irresponsible that he was out? He was given a gun? Like one, Two, and that he was like given the authority to shoot somebody or to tase somebody. Like he shouldn't be given that authority at all. Like he should be like third backup. Like he shouldn't, he should like, if things went down, he should just stay in the car. You know, it, I, I just think it's really irresponsible. But like, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy that they let some like rent a cop come on and like just ride along on a bus like that and he ends up killing the suspect? Like, I mean, we all, no one thinks that it was on purpose. You know, everyone thinks it's an accident because he said it in the video, I shot him, I'm sorry. But the fact is that he should never have been there in the first place. Just because you give a large amount of money to, to the city doesn't mean that you, you're able to like become a, you know, police officer for 24 hours. Because he killed somebody, he took a life for no reason. The guy wasn't even threatening him. The guy was running away. He said he thought he grabbed his taser. Like, why are you even like there to tase him? Like, why don't you let the professionals do it? Starbucks. Starbucks is adding a s'more frappuccino. It is coming out April 28th. I am so excited. I love s'mores. They're a little too sweet and every time I eat them, they like make my back tooth tingle. But like, it's so, I mean like, it's just so perfect. Like it's just like burnt marshmallow, chocolate, and graham crackers, and I'm so excited. I am so excited. I hope that it's good. I hope that the whipped cream tastes like burnt marshmallow. I hope that the chocolate is semi-sweet and rich. And I hope that the like coffee part is like graham crackery. I read that it's supposed to be graham cracker syrup, which I don't know how I feel about that. And then like crunched up graham crackers, which I'm all about that. Oh my God. I won't eat that day. I'll just eat that because that's going to be all my calories for the day. Okay, guys, <laughs> that's it. That's a little bit of what's going on in the world. I mean, there's way more happening. I'm 
positive but that's all that i had the most information on for you guys today thank you so much for watching this episode of morning tea and please join the conversation down below and let me know what you think about whatever it is that you're thinking about while watching this video okay thanks guys have a fantastic day bye